Welcome back to my channel. I'm Brian Kapke, and in this video, I'm going to show you how you can estimate your costs in the Azure Cloud environment using the Azure Pricing Calculator. Before I jump in, please consider supporting me on Patreon, where you get direct access to me, specialized content, and more among the benefits. So let's jump in. The most common question I got when I worked at Microsoft as a technical support person called a technical solutions professional was, how much will it cost? How much will we have to pay? That's the most common questions customers have, understandably, because yes, they're saving money on their on-premises resources, but how much will all this cost? Because of course it's not free. Well, I'm gonna show you the way we would give an answer to them. And it's not perfect to be honest, because there's a lot of variables. You don't always know every little thing you may need or what you may spend but it gives you a good starting point and it's called the Azure Pricing Calculator. And I'll put a link in the description so you can find it for yourself, but you can Google it and find it pretty easily. And you can see here, of course, they're promoting, you can try Azure for free with their free subscription for a month. Then you can see here also, you can just create a pay as you go account. As you scroll down, you can see all the different resources are provided here. It's a very useful tool and it's easy to use. The most common things you will probably use is like compute, virtual machines, and things like Azure Functions. What's interesting about this too is that as you're using it, you'll be prompted to think about things you may have not thought about, like security features, additional storage, maybe things that you thought were just sort of automatic and there that are actually getting charged for. There are also some services that you get to use for free, like Azure Automation. So it's good to know that as well. So if you wanted to price virtual machines, you could go in here and click. And what's going to happen is it starts to build a little list underneath and you can size things according to what you think you'll need and then price it accordingly. Now, one of the things I would recommend doing is kind of like when you do project estimation, a good idea is to say, do your worst case analysis. The worst case is this is going to take us 10 years and cost us $3 billion. And you say, okay, probably never happened, but that's your worst case. And then you say, well, you know, things go well and it's a sunny day and no problems then it's going to be on the low side. Two people doing a project for two days and we're done. You know, and of course you won't have that much extremes, but doing a sort of best worst case analysis, I think is a good way to approach pricing on Azure. Now what I'll do is I'll try to walk through doing a pricing of somebody who wanted to do analytics using say Databricks. So in here, I will click on analytics to start with. And you can see I have Databricks. If I wanted to do open source Spark or some other thing like the Spark R server, I can click HD Insight. I have Stream Analytics here, and I may want to use Stream Analytics with Azure Databricks. I can use Azure Analysis Services, which is a great service. I really like it. I might want Power BI Embedded, Event Hubs. Now, one of the things to bear in mind is we're building out, say, a modern data warehouse. Good chance we're going to want not only Databricks, but we'll probably want some Azure Data Lake Storage. We'll probably want to use Event Hub. There's a lot of other things in here, Azure Data Factory, that we may need to get as part of this. So sometimes people aren't thinking of all the different things you may need. So start small and add on what you think you'll need. But again, worst, best case analysis. So what I will do is I'm going to estimate what it would cost to create a modern data warehouse using Databricks. So I'm going to start by clicking on Analytics. I'm going to start small and I'll just say, let's just get Databricks set up. Now that I've selected that, I can go below and here I'm going to pick what I need. You can see here I've got what region am I in? And it started with East US 2 because I was in there before. But be careful to make sure you have your region. Selecting the region actually does a couple of things. Not only will it price differently depending on the region, but some regions don't allow certain capacities and certain services at all even. So if you think I'm going to do this, I'll just price it for West Coast, but I'm on the East Coast or I'm in one country and I pick it for another region. You may find that you can't even get that resource in that region, so be careful. So I'm picking East US 2 because I'm in the Boston area. I'm going to be going with all-purpose compute, but you can see I have a lot of options here, so I need to do a little research. Which type of compute do I need? And I have premium or standard. So standard, obviously, is going to be cheaper. You can tell just by the name. Not surprisingly, it defaulted to premium. We've got our categories. So I can say I want compute optimized or general purpose. I'm going to let it stay with the default of all. And then I can pick my instance series, which has many different options here. These instance series are determining the scale and size of my cluster node. So that's going to be pretty significant. It's going to affect performance that I'll get, but also the cost. And you can see here that if I pick something like this, it changes the instance types here. And I can pick within that you know, what I want. And I'm scaling to the cluster nodes I'm going to use. 
Now I can also pick different options. If I am a big customer and I have a good idea, or I'm gonna be budgeting and spending a lot of money, I can reserve capacity. And you can see here saving like 41% or 62% even for a three year commitment. And that's a good way to save some money, but I'm not gonna be able to do that. So I will go as pay as you go. And I can go down here now and say, how many virtual machines do I think I'll need? So I'm gonna say, you know, for my clusters, and I'll just assume, you know, here, I'm gonna do 20 virtual machines, how many hours? I can say, I'm gonna need it this many hours, uh, whatever I need here. And it's pricing here. This is what it's gonna cost you on an average per month. You can also estimate here by the DBU, Databricks unit, and I can push this up or down. It's like I'm at the maximum capacity of 744. But I can adjust this, and this will also adjust my cost. So you can see now I'm paying actually the combination of these. So this tells me that I can expect a cost of $37,739 just for my compute cost. So that's quite a bit. I'm also scaling this fairly high, and I'm asking for a lot of compute power. So that's a lot of money, but it's also a lot of compute. I can also go in and decide to upgrade my support. By default, I get what's included, which is pretty much online and looking for things. So I'm probably not going to get the best support. But if I really need production grade support for my critical workloads, I may be doing professional direct or some other version. So depending on what I need, I can do that. But of course, if I decide I want this, I'm paying more money. Everything costs. So now you can see that's just one part. Now, all I did there was said, I just want some Databricks. But I may come up and say, OK, that's great. But let's say, well, I'm going to need storage, right? I mean, I'm storing big data workloads. I'm going to go for something else here. I'll use, uh, yeah, I'll need a storage account. And let's go down here. And now I can say, OK, Databricks. Now I have to scroll past Databricks and look at storage accounts. East US, that's fine. I'll go with East US too. What do I want? Got a lot of options with storage too. But more than likely, I'm going to want Data Lake Storage Gen 2, which guess what? It's probably not cheap. And then I can pick premium or standard. Then I also get to say what account type. Blob storage is the default. There's a redundancy option. So I can say ZRS or LRS, namespaces, hierarchical, et cetera. I'll leave things as it is for now. But you can see there's, a, there's what I'm going to be paying. And that's for one terabyte, right? 1,000 gigabytes. So let's say, well, that's OK. But let's say I'm going to need a lot more than that. I don't know if I can just type in here. Looks like I can. So I'm getting 2,000. So two terabytes, and that's $300 a month, right? So monthly cost. $300.55. So again, you'll notice the cost is a lot cheaper than compute, but still that's going to be every month being billed. That's about it. So I've got what I need. I can do more. I won't do every possibility here, but you could also look at databases or more than likely I'll need a lot of security features. So I might click on security and you can see, you might think, oh yeah, I'm going to need a key vault. That's right. I'll need a VPN gateway to work with some other stuff, Azure Active Directory, and on and on. So you have a lot of things to consider. It's definitely overwhelming when you first look at the calculator because probably you haven't thought of what you haven't thought of until you've looked at this. And then you realize all the little pieces that you need to include in an architecture. That's why when you talk to people at Microsoft, you always look like you're looking at an eye chart with these diagrams because there's a lot of pieces and you pay for them generally all the time. So consider that. If you want to save your estimates and come back to them and do more and kind of work on this over time, you can log into the service with your Microsoft account and then save them and you'll be able to do that. So wrapping up, we talked about how to determine what Azure resources you will need and what the cost of those resources will be by using the Azure pricing calculator, which is the same thing that the Microsoft salespeople use. We walk through entering everything you're gonna need into the calculator and of course the challenge is, what are you gonna need? Do you know? More importantly, it's very difficult, I find, to estimate how much of these resources you'll need. Looking at things like DBUs, Databricks units, isn't terribly meaningful. So you do have to do some experimentation, playing around, but you can probably get some estimates by sizing some things out and just taking some guesses. What I recommend doing is do a sort of worst case scenario. We're gonna use lots of heavy duty stuff. We're gonna keep it running all the time and then do a low ball estimate, something that is pretty inexpensive. Let's assume we're not gonna use a lot. The truth will be somewhere in the middle. You're gonna to have to play around and see because the worst part of this is you don't know what you can turn off. A perfect example is Databricks clusters. They have an auto shutoff feature. So you might think data science is gonna be in there all the time, banging away against the clusters, but guess what? They take a couple of weeks in the middle of summer and they're not even there. 
Other times they've got a lot of other things going on. And so the auto timeout feature shuts off the clusters. So you might find that the costs are much lower than you were expecting. You may also find that you can create cheaper clusters for them to do a lot of their work and save yourself some more money. There's also the auto scale on Databricks clusters helps reduce costs because they may have asked for two to 2,000 nodes and it turns out their workloads are only taking 20 nodes at a time. So again, it's a lot cheaper. This is why it's difficult to really get clear estimates ahead of time. So proceed cautiously. Experiment, try the Azure Pricing Calculator, but also try creating a few things and doing some trials, some POCs and maybe some small projects. And then you'll be able to get a good feel for what things cost. And more importantly, the things you're not even thinking about, like security features, Azure Data Lake storage, uh, all the other things. So that's it for this time. Please like, share, subscribe, leave questions in the comments. Until next time, I'm Paul for We're all in this together. Thank you.